Hello there and welcome back to Spain or Castile. I'll simply go for Spain from now on so you won't be annoyed by that. Uh, last time, well, we ended up in a coalition war. We also secured three of the electors and thus I should potentially be able to take the uh, Holy Roman Empire by just getting them to like me a little bit better and then basically that should be sorted out. I also had to release Galicia, Navarra and Dauphine as a vassal or release my vassalage of them thanks to the fact that, uh, well, I screwed up I guess you could say. But colony wise, we are doing pretty well. Shouldn't be an issue there. And also, I have done a couple of checks on basically securing myself that my knowledge of how the uh, uh, the Cherokees and uh, Aztec, basically how the native warfare or conquest actually works, so I can take the provinces with uh, no overextension whatsoever, convert them, and then call them for basically a almost free. But as you can see I can also potentially also go after the colonization of uh, West Britain here. That would allow me to actually get a colonial war in Great Britain which will allow me to take the remainers. But also as you can see uh, colony wise I will be able to most likely block them off before they can even start moving inland. So the only thing that I really have to secure right now is uh, most likely I'll be taking a ton of these provinces or uh, I'll consider it at least. And other than that, uh, I probably won't do too much here, but I have to deal with Portugal due to the fact that they are colonizing quite a lot right now. They're getting extensively uh, more, well, I wouldn't say bold, but they're getting uh, they're getting a little bit too uppity. So what I could do, of course, is if I take these colonies, they basically will not have no way to actually go ahead and colonize. So uh, hopefully I can get a smaller coalition, go after an ally of theirs, and as of now they do not have any. So potentially Portugal will actually keep the certain parts of uh, of this area if I do not make uh, make good of myself. So what we will do here is basically close off the northern parts, take out the natives, and after that we'll be focusing on colonizing around the coast here, and then we'll be dealing with uh, with Portugal. So uh, with that in mind, we'll keep on going and we'll see how uh, how things turn out. As you can see, Holy Roman Empire have elected me Emperor, so that actually gave me two achievements. First of all, Spain is the Emperor, second of all, I believe, overthrew Austria, and that is quite good. I could also go ahead and do offline, just for sort of that don't pop up. As you can see, I overthrew Austria and become the Emperor of the Holy Roman Empire, so that is done, that is all fine, and with that we should basically be set here. Because as you can see, we do have the my three electors. And this actually gives me a second opportunity because I'm now emperor. I can add provinces to the empire, and as you can see, I can actually add basically Italy. And but here's the funny spot: I can actually add Spain, make myself a proper member of the empire. The only thing I have to do is actually annex Guyen. So, with that in mind, I'll be sending this guy back home, and we'll be starting the annexation of Guyen to actually be able to add myself to the empire. It will give me a boost with. Uh, with the emperors, I believe, Denmark, Great Britain, Burgundy, Venice, they hold imperial provinces. So yeah, basically they all turned into enemies of, me, of mine now. And as I said, if I go after Venice, I'll probably hand it over to uh, uh, Verona here, Mantua. I still have Ferrara, which is kind of surprising, but I can live with that. Uh, but as I was saying, I can actually just go ahead, potentially now, and cancel the vassalization of these uh, these two. Because I will be getting them once I actually take the Renovata Imperi uh, decision that will give me the Holy Roman Empire. But for the time being, we'll annex Guyenne. I know they have, could have been, or I could have used them for something more. But there is no real reason for me to do that. Because, as you might imagine, as seen so now, if I add myself to the Empire, and basically I will not be fighting too many wars, I'll be quiet more or less. I'll protect the Empire, I won't actually be fighting, I think not at least excessively or something like that. So uh, with that in mind we'll see how, how it all turns out but I'm pretty confident that uh, that it won't actually be any problems from now on or more or less. And as I said I'll also most likely try and send some colonies down here to block off Portugal. Basic colonies around them is a potential possibility uh, especially considering how many colonists or how many colonies I can actually run simultaneously. I think I'm up at 8 now if, if I do uh, if I do my best at running colonies and uh, not actually fighting and stuff like that. And I also have some colonies that needs to be built here. But as you can see, economic ideas. Uh, I really shouldn't actually go ahead and call the land that I currently have. I should uh, I should wait around a little bit, I think. Uh, as I said, going for admin tech, uh, I believe it's 14. Yeah, 14 could be advantage and then get the uh, 
the religious ideas, but I think I'm also go or that I am going to more or less. Uh, yeah, we can of course call all of my colonies. Uh, I, yes, I can live with that, and it will most likely help the revenue stream, I believe. I'm a little bit un unsure about how calls really work here, but as you can see, I just used 120 points to call. I have no idea how many colonies. As you can see, it's a very long list. Uh, but as I was saying, right, don't expect any wars, don't expect any big military diversions or anything. What I will be doing is, the only thing I will be doing, an XGN, take back Navarra and Galicia, and other than that, I won't really do anything or do much, as it were. I will be fighting Burgundy pretty soon, so I should potentially try and get best buds with uh, Austria and Bohemia, potentially. I'm pretty sure they hate my guts. Bohemia, I can ally with. I can ally with Austria. They hate Burgundy, so that's good. Hungary potential. Hungary is definitely a potential ally here that I can use to big the border of the Ottomans. So I can basically use them as a defensive barrier. And I could potentially start some conquests against the Ottomans as well. But once again, that's not really the point here. I will be doing some more colonization and we'll be waiting for uh, basically just the... Uh, how should I put this? Uh, basically just waiting for the uh, the colonies to, to finish up. I'll be uh, exploring this area here so I can start actually colonizing, as I said, get uh, that done. So uh, we'll see how things turn out. But for now, I'll just, as I said, colonize and... I do my best to make people uh, like me again. We'll see. Uh, we'll see if I'm successful or not. Core painter available. Lately, we have been looking for painters or artists, or try to for painters or artists to try to adequately capture the glory of a monarch. As it happens, a painter offered service to us just this morning. I think I'll just hire him. Uh, 300 ducats for a stability point with my income is virtually nothing, and colonial maintenance now is rather low here. As you can see. My five colonies are just costing me uh, 1703 a month or a year. So I'll be setting up most likely two or three colonies or colonies in this area here. As I said, to try and block off Portugal and otherwise just mess about with them a little bit. So we'll see how that turns out. Currently also in the training of, uh, well, an army for that purpose. So uh, I'll just get that done and we'll see how, how it all turns out. As you can see, we have an event here, Heresy. One of your advisors argued with the bishop during the last banquet, and now the church has sent an inquisitor to question him about his ideas. You can spend your influence to defend him, or to bow to the church to gain a post benevolence. As you can see, I can either gain an inquisitor, gain 10 people influence, and my theologian will die. Or I can take 50 admin points and lose 20 people influence, which I will do because, well, people influence ain't really, as you can see, an issue at all. I am controlling all of the future cardinals, so uh, the Holy See will be mine, uh, I guess you could say, sooner rather than later. So for now, I'll just go ahead and take the rest of their economic ideas, and then we will focus on getting the, uh, uh, well, how should I put it, the next set of ideas. But as you can see, I have set up one colony too many, and that is currently costing me quite a lot. I'm going about zero with eight colonies, but with nine, things are getting a little bit tricky, I guess you could say. But as you can see, St. Helena, or even the funniest thing, Minas Gerais is actually uh, giving me 55 ducats a month, or it's costing 25 ducats. I can have four colonies due to my four colonists, so the more colonists you have, the cheaper your colonies will be. And as you can see, Minas Gerais cost me plus 25 percent or 55 ducats a month so yeah eight colonies i can basically run or uh, I, I guess you could say i change up between seven and eight colonies but it isn't really a problem here as you can see this one is soon done and i'm pretty sure most of these will follow up soon as well so i'm keeping out for a year should be just uh, just enough here so we'll see how how it turns out i also secure the island in the center of well the Pacific I guess I should say, to be able to better control uh, African colonization and the coalition, some people have left the colonization, some have joined, Savoy has joined in, but mostly people have just been leaving it. So for the time being I'll just be uh, be peaceful using my diplomats to uh, to appease the natives or the other powers in Europe in this case. And as you can see I'm basically set to keep the throne for a long time, mostly due to the fact that Cologne and well, well at least Saxony is actually reformed. So it's kind of weird I'm waiting for Cologne, but as long as I can keep Austria off the thought of two of these. If not, I'll have to go for another war, most likely against Pomerania, since they are no longer in the coalition. And if I have to go for such a war, then I will definitely be trying to basically just vassalize them to secure uh, the hold over the Holy Roman Empire. And then I basically just have to sit by and wait to, uh, to get what I want here. But I basically or almost discovered all of... Uh, 
uh, all of the Americas. So what I will be doing now is sending that guy north to uh, find the last province. As you can see, I'm also going pretty well on the colonization on the southern parts here, as well as uh, colonizing Minas Gerais in an attempt to try and cut off Portugal uh, around this area. I think it, the limits will most likely be around here or something. Uh, I'm pretty sure Portugal will most likely be able to colonize these three provinces, so probably these two. We'll simply have to wait and see. But as I said, I'll try to cut them off uh, as much as possible. But for the time being, we'll just have to continue and uh, and see how things turn out. Where did I want these guys? I want them on the Mexico, Peru. And uh, no, I want them in Brazil. There we go. So yeah, I seriously need to get rid of the Portuguese uh, here. So I'll, once the uh, once the biggest once leaves the coalition, I'll be basically set for uh, for an attack here. So we'll see how it goes. I might actually have to go a little bit down on this slider to uh, well, just to make sure that I can actually pay my my dues until the that colony is done. So uh, we'll see how things turn out. Diplomatic tech. Uh, Aethas Marich, which allows me to build dry docks and trader posts, along with my trade range being increased, should have a little bit of income, not much, admittedly. So we'll see how that turns out. But for the time being, colonies are basically, as I said, everything I'll be focusing on. Once or, or once, um, Gien has actually been, uh, well, become a part of my nation. So I'm basically set for, uh, uh, well, being able to, what should I say, uh, link it up with the Holy Roman Empire and that would actually allow me to get some, I guess, uh, boost to uh, relation with the other powers in the Empire. So I'm basically just looking for people now to try and, well, make vote for what I want, more or less. So I'm looking for the people with the lowest amount of uh, negative relations to me and simply improving the relations with them and that I think should help out a little bit at least. And yes, as you know, the, uh, well, the uh, Imperial Authority here. I won't actually do too much about it. I'll simply allow it to. What did it annex something? Yeah, they actually did all the way up here. I did was not call into that war. Kind of weird. Probably because I'm their ally or something. I didn't lose any Imperial Authority either, so. Not my problem, I guess. What I can do, however, is of course try to make or get the Protestants and Reformed to change back to. Uh, to Catholic, that is one way to get some uh, some more influence, and I could of course do that to wars as well. So it's not really anything I need to focus on. But as you might imagine, for the time being, I'll just colonize and leave Europe to its own devices. It'll take a while before the people who hate me actually will not hate me, and thus I should well not stick out my head too much. But uh, as you might imagine, I'll continue colonizing, and we'll see how it actually uh, ends up. Of course we get a comet sighted, and well that gives me a hit of stability hits, uh, and always annoying as you might imagine, but nothing more than that really. Stability isn't really that big of a deal in this game, as long as it's positive you aren't, you aren't really in trouble, so no problems there. Also as you can see I currently have 9 colonies, but I'm still going profit, that's because I've turned the slider very far down, I've done that with everything, and also I believe I am currently contemplating uh, getting rid of some of my troops, simply to try and make it a little bit more amicable, and well, to make it easier to actually control what's going on, but I'm afraid that if I actually get rid of some of my troops, the coalition will attack me, and thus I'll have to give some more concessions, and everyone will, well, not be happy about that. But as I said, for the time being, I should, I think, focus on trying to eat Galicia and Navarra as well. It'll boost my economy just a little bit, and they don't actually have any troops, so I can simply take them without any, well, fuss at all, uh, more or less, so that's fine. But uh, not really that much else to say. I think I'll actually end it here. It's a little bit, I guess, it's a little bit short, but I'm trying to keep it at about 15 minutes, so I think it should be fine. We have done pretty well in this episode. We have become Holy Roman Emperor. We've overthrown Austria. Two achievements for us, and we're basically on our way now to start taking completely charge of the Holy Roman Empire and try to try and well get things going. We will have to fight Burgundy and force them to release most likely as many states of the Holy Roman Empire as possible. Uh, of course, I want. I basically want the borders to be uh, the borders of the Empire and thus I will also be going after Venice here, taking those two, probably handing it over to Mantua or Ferrara or something, should work out fine, getting rid of the Danes here and 
Well, it's likely if I, everything I conquest will be handed over to someone who's part of the Empire. I'm a little bit unsure if that actually works, if they're more likely to rebel against you once you actually take that uh, vassal forming decision, but I hope not. Well, uh, we'll figure that out down the line, but uh, as I said, thank you for watching. Please leave a comment, praise criticism, anything you feel like, and we'll continue our conversation attempts and everything else next time. Bye!